After months of preparation and delays, we finally set sail from Stralsund on our cross-Atlantic journey to Alabama. Our first week at sea delivered plenty of challenges and drama. I struggled to find my sea legs. Sea Falca suffered some early injuries and we faced a gale with 38 knot winds. But we also enjoyed some smooth sailing. We battled the Baltic and she gave us everything this powerful and beautiful sea has to offer. The day was finally here and we were ready. We got the sea dogs all set and the boat ready while Mike worked on the navigation and weather plan. We were excited, prepared, and ready to set sail. We went happily through the bridge and into the Baltic Sea, waters we know very well. We put up two of the sails and were cruising along nicely for about four hours. waves began to roll and swell to about two meters high. We began to fight against the currents and the wind. We safely secured Captain Jack and Scout in the cabin below and took our seasickness medicine. We were pushing heavily against the wind and the current was attacking us, pushing us back further than we could move forward. It's in moments like these that you forget how soothing the sea can be and you remember its power and force. continuously adjusted the sails, switching back and forth from the Genoa and the smaller jib. We reefed the main and continued to tack and fight and battle the Baltic, which clearly did not want us invading her home on this day. I began to feel queasy and told myself to fight it, but the seasickness set in and I spent the next six hours feeding the fish. Captain Jack and Scout stayed in the cabin below most of the time. They looked a bit uneasy at times, but they did great and didn't have the same struggles with the seasickness that I had. After 12 hours of sailing and battling, the waters began to calm. We had made it 44 nautical miles northwest of Stralsund and decided to anchor at Pre Rochelle, just north of Darser Ort. By the time we got the ship secure, it was around 2300 and we all went immediately to sleep. It was 3.30 in the morning when I woke up um, hearing this scratchy, rattling sound of the anchor dragging over the ground and checked the GPS and it showed 0.8 knots to, um, to the northeast so the wind had picked up tremendously and we were moving north to northeast um, um, so we got up uh, in our still in our underpants and try to haul in the anchor, which was uh, very difficult because um, at one point the, the anchor chain got tangled and stuck between the deck and the windlass. And on the rocking foredeck, um, the the anchor swung 
and just wait for a good moment to hit the hull, um, which we were trying to avoid. It was pretty challenging to actually manually haul in the anchor and secure it. Um, so we cranked out our motor and um, headed to the nearest port. You can see the anchor ball still flapping around because nobody wanted to go on the rocking foredeck to untangle it. With the damaged anchor windlass, we decided to head toward the nearest port, which was Rostock, about 31 nautical miles away. Now, this doesn't seem like a very far distance, but against the current, with four six winds and two to three meter waves, we only made as much as 1.8 knots. Finally, after 12 hours of more of the Baltic's rock and roll and a bit more fish feeding, we made it to the Marina Coheduna in Rostov, Guanajuato. lost all our boards on the bowsprit, so we have to get that replaced today. There's nothing there. There's the anchor hanging in there. You can see here that the chain just got jumbled in the track, so we tied this line. And this was at 3.30 in the morning. Captain Jack wants to help now. We just tied it up really tight and the boat was rocking and somehow we managed to get the anchor secure. But get down there. So the anchor secure, but we gotta fix that today. While Mike worked on our long list, I headed out to find supplies. There was only a sailmaker near the marina, so I hopped on the ferry and ventured into Guanamunda. Unfortunately, I struck out there too. I returned to our mooring after my failed mission, and Mike was ready to take a swim underneath Sea Falca to check on the sheath that had been sucked into the bow thruster mechanism. Thing. Uh, uh, I had to cut the line. Just, yeah, I had to cut that sheet. I guess we need a new sheet. Yep. But I hope we don't see it here. Both <laughs> Yes, hope not. Mike and the pups and I headed back out to find supplies. We took the ferry back to Bornemunda and then the train into Rostock and walked two kilometers to the marine supply shop. We didn't find the fuse we wanted, but we found one that would work. So we headed back to Sea Falca, made the repairs, and decided to get some rest and work more the next day. But the Baltic had something different in mind. There's a popular saying among Baltic sailors, if you don't like the weather on the Baltic Sea, just wait an hour. We awoke at Hoaduna to a gorgeous sunrise, calm waters, and favorable winds. Mike decided to take advantage of the conditions, get the boat ready, and set sail around 10 o'clock. I decided to unleash the hounds and let them play at the beach for about half an hour so they would be well exercised and maybe a bit worn out for whatever the Baltic had in mind for us today. We got the boat ready and headed out. As bitter as the Baltic was to us on our first two days at sea, on this day, she was sweet as pumpkin pie. Under a perfectly sunny, bright blue sky, we sailed at about 3.5 knots along the sea that was now welcoming us into her nurturing arms. It was so calm that Mike was able to do a little work, and I took the first shift at the helm. And Mike was even able to play with his drone a little and get some remarkable photos and video of Sea Falca under sail on a perfect afternoon. We 
We also experimented a little bit with the mizzen stay sail. We sailed 43.4 nautical miles in 14 hours. enjoyed a glorious sunset from Sea Falca's bow. It was midnight when we began to get close to the Heiligenhofen Marina. Mike had never been in this marina and it was pitch black dark. Most of the markers were not lit, making the pilotage very difficult at night. So we decided to anchor for the night right outside the marina. A day of rest and recovery and a little bit of real work was needed for us. But we did take a little bit of time to enjoy the beautiful scenery and also let Captain Jack and Scout explore a little bit and enjoy all the fantastic new smells of another new place. accomplished on this day and as a bonus we got to connect with my lifelong friend Yvonne Habermann. She is a German sailor who also has great experience of sailing the Baltic Sea. Even the Sea Dogs had a visitor on board. Remember that saying among Baltic sailors about the weather changing quickly and sometimes severely? After the smooth sailing on Wednesday, the Baltic showed us her fury on this day. We believe that the good seaman avoids the storm he cannot weather and weathers the storm he cannot avoid. We put this belief to action. We had about 30 more miles to make it to our first destination, Kiel. We knew we could hit some rough weather and we needed to dodge a military exercise zone that would cause us to make a swing way out of our direct path. We also knew there could be some squalls. like that, it was over.
At LeBeau Hoffen, we worked a little bit more on boat maintenance and gave our day jobs a little more attention. Nice dog yard had a proper burial at sea. Only a couple of boards and some dirt remained. It didn't make it through the gale force winds. Then we began planning for our passage through the Kiel Canal, where we will meet the ferocious North Sea on the other side. In next week's episode, we lock in and then cruise through the Kiel Canal to Rendsburg to wait out the storm front. We are treated to a visit with some salty sailors who know a lot about Sea Falcon. Then we face the mighty Elbe River and the ferocious North Sea on our way to the island of Helgeland. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. For deeper, exclusive content and cool rewards, like a link to our GPS satellite tracker, join our crew on Patreon. The link is in the description below.